Media Beat Connection here. Very excited to have you guys back. There's a tour coming. If you are listening online, make sure you see these guys live. And uh, just a, a great record, too. Can't say enough about the band. There's a moment for every band where they're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> you know? My biggest misconception was like how long it's going to take to be just a full-time musician. Sometimes when things are good, it's hard to stay positive. Just to pay rent alone on music, like it's, it's just, it's tough. You spend all these hours in a car driving to do what you do. The lights, the lights get lower and you kind of lose sight of them. I still have doubts, you know, it's like, am I good, you know, am I good enough to make a living, am I good enough to, like, motivate myself even when it's not going well. I didn't really care about the consequences of pursuing an art when I was just, like, trying to be in bands and play shows. You just get a, an affinity for sharing your, your thoughts and your songs and, like, perceived talents with people. And I think that, like, that's a real addiction, you know. I, I feel like I create music for both myself and the audience because I don't have anything else like that in my life where I feel as confident as getting up on stage and, and playing for new people. Music gives me the platform to, to say something. You never know what each night's gonna hold. There's no routine. Going and having the privilege of, of being in these new communities, just to get that experience, is always gonna come back here. It's, it's gonna have an impact on everything. It's almost like I've had no idea what I want to create ever. I just wanted to be doing something. I wanted to be expressing myself. I wanted to be creating art. I wanted to be moving the conversation forward. You know, you can emulate something or you can try to be at the front line, at the avant-garde end of things. And I'm kind of trying to do both when I, when I work on music. Always been really fascinated by pop music and pop culture. But I guess I really got started towards the end of high school just DJing, being interested in that. There's this sample from a Brazilian record that I like, and there's what's going on in Top 40 Pop, and there's what's going on in Hip Hop, and there's all of the like electronic music and dance music that I love, and I'm trying to take all four of those things and slam them together, turn them into a pop song that is unique. That whole thread of trying to just bring a lot of disparate things together has really continued into the music today. The whole mentality has always been like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing, but confident. Just try to move forward on it at all times. I don't know where the pressure comes from exactly, but I definitely feel this really like strong urge to win, to just succeed in some manner. I don't know. I have a feeling I'm going to probably always feel unfulfilled. Who I'm really looking at and who I compare myself to are the greats, you know? How do they do it? What's the modern day paradigm for it? What's my own personal like facsimile of that. Check. So I'm just invariably falling so short of the mark, constantly. Accepting that failure has been a really hard part of, of learning my own artistic process. My question sometimes, like, is my own creative voice strong enough or unique enough or impactful enough 
to cut through but I still have some weird ego that's like, this makes me special or unique in some way, so I gotta keep pursuing it. It's probably very naive for me to think that way. Uh, to think that I'm like, somehow have something special to say, because I probably don't, but I'm still gonna find out. I realized like 10 years ago, my 16 year old self, I'm pretty much accomplished the goals that I had set for myself when I was 16. But like most 16 year olds, it turns out it's not as cool as I thought it would be. You know, like I didn't realize how much more work there was involved. If I'm deriving most of my satisfaction from creating something that I like and accepting the fact that most of what I create I don't like, then it's very easy to get frustrated and get annoyed with music. Uh, you know, I do spend almost more time than working on music and working on the art trying to figure out, okay, how do we get to the next step? How do we bring in these opportunities for ourselves? How do we take what we want to do, what we have this privilege of doing by making art and bring it to a larger audience? And that's maybe where I get the, the notion that business can be art and art can be business and they don't have to be exclusive in any way. In a best case scenario, if we become successful, if this hustle pays off, then I'll get to spend more time doing what I want to do. 
you know, the reward for hard work is more hard work. It's how I feel it's going to be. And I'm going to reach a certain point, then there's just going to be a new goal, a new hurdle to jump over, and, you know, a new, a new mountain to climb. really splitting the difference between an electronic group and a live band. You know, what I bring to the table is trying to, trying to look at, okay, what's the goal here? What are we trying to create? You know, how do we take all four of our different opinions and different interests in art and turn it into something that is unique to each of us and unique to the four of us? I love performing and it's an important aspect of this band the whole cumulative experience when you bring it back home it leaves an indelible mark i don't know how to how to quantify it or qualify it even but it definitely has had a huge impact on this band if you have a good show you're going to bring that back in here it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be a good song it just means that it will be indicative of the energy that you've absorbed and uh and if, that you've decided to then express back outward. For Pete Connection from Seattle, Washington, thank you for being here. Woman on my dreams. Uh.